Welcome to our midweek meditation, moment of meditation here at Nazarene Baptist Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor K. Marshall Williams, Sr., and uh, we are celebrating uh, all month in particular, but every day, uh, African-American black history. We're celebrating in particular what God has done with a people that were created in the image of God that happened to be of ebony hue. God has kept us. Um, my grandma once told me, she said, you know, I know you got a nice car and a nice big church and nice family and nice home, but really all you really have is Jesus. And you know she's right because everything uh, in, the, in the temporary, in the transitory, passes away. And many times we invest in that which cannot love us back permanently and perfectly. We invest in what one preacher called perishable product. And so the Bible says only what we do for Christ or set our affections on things above. We are working for good fruit. We are working for when our works are established, gold, silver, and precious stone. So we celebrate not just the month of February, but every day how God is using a people, in particular, of Ebony Hugh. God, praise the Lord. Father, thank you for this time together. We pray, Lord, that you'd give me clarity of thought, articulation of speech, that I would say only that which what you want me to say in a way that you want me to say it. Because you said it. Cleanse my heart, Lord. Clarify my mind that I might share a word of encouragement and challenge to the people of God on this day. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture this week comes from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Uh, this verse has been bubbling and bursting to be broadcast from my bosom all week long. He says, finally, brethren, my brother, and brother is an inclusive term for brothers and sisters. He said, be strong in the Lord. Think about it, beloved. We don't have any strength without him. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Understanding what he's done in the past, what he's doing right now, and what he will yet do brings joy. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In the deutimus power, the dynamite that belongs, that's deposited in the heart of every blood-bought, born-again believer that's been birthed into the body of Christ, we receive power, the person of the Holy Ghost. We don't have to tarry for him, wait on him. He indwells us at salvation. Now, the Bible does say in Ephesians 5, 18, that we have to be filled daily, moment by moment, surrender to the Spirit because we leak, that we can walk in the Spirit, Galatians 5, 16, and not desire, not entertain the lusts, the inordinate natural cravings of the flesh. Three things about this verse that God gives us this word to let us know that the battle that we face is unavoidable. As long as we live in this low land of sorrow and domicile on this domain, the battle is unavoidable. Number one, the battle within me, within you. Because Psalm 51.5 says we were shaped in iniquity. In sin did my mama conceive. In other words, we were naughty by nature. We come here wrong. Hallelujah. And then he says, we got a battle, a war going on, the spirit against the flesh. They're in opposition one to another so that we can't do what we're supposed to do. We find ourselves doing things uh, because we have a natural proclivity, Romans 7, 18, in our flesh. No good thing. We have a natural proclivity to do the wrong thing, to obey the dictates and mandates and cravings and urgings of our flesh. That's why we need the Lord. Can't do this without the Lord so that uh, we won't battle consistently with our three enemies other than sin, Satan, and self. 
We got three more enemies, flesh, eyes, what we see and allow our eyes to see and the pride of life. That's why every morning I say, Lord, uh, I just want to surrender my suma, my body to you. I want you to take my mind that I might think your thoughts. Take my, my eyes that I might know that they're your eyes and look at only what you want me to look at. I pray, Lord God, take my mouth that I might say only what you want me to say. That I might set a watch over my tongue because once it's out there, it's out. And guard my heart. I'm going to surrender my heart because out of my heart will come what's, what's in my heart will come out of my mouth. He says, every day, Lord, take my hands, take my, my feet, take my body. Because my body is your temple. You domicile, you dwell there. First Corinthians chapter 6, 19, 20. And I want to help me to glorify you, to put you on display, to magnify you in my body and my spirit. Why? Because they belong to you. How come they belong to you? You died for me. You redeemed me. And Psalm 107 verse 2 says, the redeemed of the Lord just ought to say something. This battle is unavoidable. The enemy is invisible. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. Verse 12 said, we're not wrestling with, uh, it's not uh, these folk hating on me. No, there's a spirit behind this thing. Principalities and powers. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan is all his emissaries. The battle is in the invisible. The enemy's invisible. It's in the unseen realities of life. That's why we got to pray because the only way we can fight the battle in the heavenlies and the unseen realities is dialogue with daddy. Pray. He said, and when we pray, and get in touch with the truth and dialogue with the holy. He fights our battles. I'm going to have got a witness this morning. And, and then he says uh, the, the battle is unavoidable. The enemy is invisible. But help me, Holy Ghost. He says the victory is irrevocable. We, we, we already, because Isaiah 57, 4, 17 says it's a transdispensational truth. He says it was given to Israel, but it's applicable to us. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, I will condemn. He co coordinates in the Old Testament. He said, Romans 8.37, we are more than conquerors. We are super conquerors. Nothing shall be able. Who going to bring a charge against God's elect? He says, greater is he that's in you. First John 4, 4, then he that's in the world. He said, be steadfast. Stay on the case. Huh? Because thanks be to God, First Corinthians 15, 57, he gives us the victory. It's already ours. Just a few battles down here. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. It's a gift. And it's only through Jesus Christ. So he says, you know the battle's unavoidable. The enemy's invisible. Walk in the, in the truth and the knowledge that the victory is irrevocable. So we can sing that song, victory shall be mine. Victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, thank you, Jesus. Victory shall be mine. Say yeah, somebody. Victory shall be mine. God help us. To be strong in you and in the power of your Kratos, your inexplicable power, inexhaustible power, and your might. For Lord, great is he, the Holy Ghost in us is able to be victorious over anything in the world. Bless her. And keep us now, Lord, in your tender, loving care. Father, if there's somebody here that doesn't know you, pray, God, that they would come to know you today, that they would surrender. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I'm lost. 
The word says you died for my, in my place. I should have died. I should have been on that cross. But you died that I might live. And your word says, Romans 10, 13, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You want to be saved, call on him. If you call, Jeremiah 33, 3, he'll answer you. He'll transform you. You'll be a new creature, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, in Christ. And then he'll help you to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. He'll walk with you and talk with you and remind you, you are his own. Thank you, Lord. We pray that somebody would invite you into their life or somebody would rededicate their life. Say, Lord, I want to be transformed. I want my mind renewed that I can demonstrate the good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Lord, bless your people today. Bring somebody to come to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're here for you. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Ask him to come into your heart. We will guide you and show you a more excellent way. Contact us at our church, 215-223-9821. Our website, www.nazarenebc.org. We have uh, the plan of salvation there how to grow in Christ and be the man, the woman that God is calling you to be. And uh, we will counsel you and guide you and disciple you that you can be all that the Lord is calling for in these last and evil days. God bless you. We thank you for your prayers, for your prayerful and some financial support. We so feel so moved. You can give on our website and view all of our sermons.